we'll put on a show next. Huh. Looks suspicious. <laughs> Get. Hello again, I am Blunty, and for those of you who saw yesterday's video, little update for you. The local Aussie Ubisoft team saw it too, and they decided to hook me up with the game code for Star Wars Outlaws so I could, in fact, see for myself what the deal with the game is. They can't say it out loud, of course, for obvious reasons, but one might feel inclined to suppose that they too possibly are as frustrated as some of us are about the absolute wild state and baffling inconsistency of reviews out there right now. But yeah, turns out I don't have to make the choice anymore. Uh, Ubisoft just uh, popped a code into my pocket, so there you go. Try for yourself. Suck it and see. Give it a fair cop. F-A, F-O, etc, I suppose. So, while I'm saving my actual proper playthrough for my streams this weekend, so my Twitch peeps and I can all share in the experience live and in full, I did play through the opening act on my main PC rig last night to make sure I had all the settings and whatnot locked in for the streams. And no worries there, by the way. Full fat, maxed out settings, all the rays traced at 4K, easy peasy, locked to 60. Uh, that was with FSR 3 doing a little lifting too. I haven't done any fiddling yet to see how much FSR is needed to stay there at 60 on my heavy duty gaming rig, but it already looks great. I also saw this morning the Digital Foundry video on the game's performance on consoles, where I discovered a surprising fact. It seems even on the lowly Xbox Series S, Ubisoft are still asking their Snowdrop engine for ray tracing. So that's neat. Of course, on the Xbox Series S, wait, did I call it this One X before or Series S? <laughs> Stupid naming conventions. Still bugging me all these years later. Xbox Series S, FSR is doing a lot of work and lifting things up from a dynamic resolution starting at a 720, but hey, it still works. But all that did make me think about how this game would go on the ROG Ally. And as you have, of course, been seeing, if the overlay didn't give it away for you, on my original launch Z1 Extreme Ally, it is doing fine. Not superb, but quite playable. And just like the consoles, it seems ray tracing on PC is a core setting you cannot actually turn all the way off. But I have shown you before that the Ally can be shockingly good at ray tracing. So, yeah, that's fine. In fact, I had a much easier time getting Star Wars Outlaws running smooth on the Ally than I did the other recent Star Wars games, Jedi Survivor and even worse, Fallen Order. Completely different developer and game engine of course, but still a very similar presentation, naturally enough, and aesthetic of course, so interesting comparison all the same. Right, so let's talk about the settings that are generating the gameplay you have been seeing. We're more or less at basic minimum here, which the game auto-detected and set for me. I did make a couple of changes though. I pulled it down to 720p because its default choice was 1080, which worked, but not really a happy frame rate for me. 900p did not do much better, unfortunately. So it is a 720p game here, only it's not actually 720p because even this resolution needed FSR 3.0's most aggressive setting, a fixed upscaler in ultra performance mode, a setting I normally avoid at all costs. I also turned off the chromatic aberration and film grain because at this resolution, well, <laughs> that would be stupid to leave on. All it would do would make it look worse. Uh, also, of course, no motion blur because it makes me literally sick. Not figuratively, I, I do mean motion blur literally makes me sick. Aside from that, everything is where the game auto set it, which is basically the low preset. I gotta tell you though, in handheld mode, with that 7-inch 1080p FreeSync premium screen hiding the crimes, as I so often say in these videos, it does look surprisingly decent. There are other games, say Cyberpunk for example, that are simply too hideous to play at their lowest possible settings like this. Thankfully, the ally does have power enough to kick that particular game up a few more notches, so I don't have to suffer that. But the point is, this game survives the potato mode graphics choices surprisingly well. And if all you have is the ROG Ally, or indeed you're traveling and it's all you've got with you, yeah, you can play this game here and feel fine about it. 
It isn't a style of gameplay that demands a solid lock to 60 FPS to feel decent. I mean, that is certainly ideal, you want to be there. But here we're floating in the low 40s to mid 50s in a lot of situations, and it feels fine. And in the more demanding sections, it still maintains at least 30 FPS absolute bare minimum, with very rare drops to just below that. Now with all that said, caveat, I have not played very deep into the game. I just wanted to play enough to get me into several different environments, cities, indoors, and out in the wide fields with weather and such going on. So it may be that somewhere deeper into the game there is a significantly more problematic location, but from the testing I've been able to do uh, so far and the fistful of hours this morning I've been dicking about with it, it seems pretty solid to me. I don't expect any significant issues deeper in. And considering I did expect to have to wrestle with this game just to get it to hit a steady 30 in the first place, I'm pretty warmly surprised that we easily exceeded that. And by the way, just while we're having a chinwag here, even at the lowest settings, K, our lead character there, still looks way better than what those, um, I am now sure, are faked, edited, misleading shots that I was talking about in yesterday's video. You know, the one I used for the thumbnail, that one there? Yeah. Even on the lowest setting, she doesn't look that bad, so I don't know where that image came from, but somebody's lying. <laughs> Figured that would be the case anyway. So that's that for you. I'll let the gameplay run for a bit more so you folks can see a bit more for yourself in sort of different gameplay situations, how it's going there. And uh, please do pop a follow for me over on Twitch, Bluntnate on Twitch, if you want to hang out as I start playing it properly this weekend, as I almost always stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, at least on the Aussie side of the date line. Um, and my streams are super chill, so, you know. Meanwhile, here on YouTube, please do the thing with the thumbs, give it a like, pop a comment, and sub and a bell if you haven't already. That would be neat. Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty. I'll catch you next time. And uh, thank you to the patrons who will scroll along at the end of the video. Whoa! This thing has some kick. Oh, okay, we're alive. We fix the ship, get to the core worlds, and land a big score.